It's okay. We try to talk to you. You don't listen. We try to be civilized. We want to give you a break. Now you're pushing us to do this. No, no, I, I'm doing art. This is my right. I can do this. Did, uh, sidewalk? If we unlawfully detain them, then that opens yeah. up, up for lawsuit. The police said they tried to be civilized. Instead, it's lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit. In Leon Valley, Texas, the police just can't keep themselves out of trouble. How much did the latest unlawful arrest settlement cost the taxpayers? I can't wait to tell you. And I also have the insider details that you won't find anywhere else. But first, let's see what it's like to practice expressive speech in a free country. What's up, Papa? How's it going? Good. Good man. That's good. Somebody call us because you're doing graffiti. So if you don't have a permit, unfortunately, yeah, you have to stop. It's expression to create and public property. It's a, public, yes. Yeah, I've been arrested one and four, three times now. Uh -huh. So, I mean, if y'all need to arrest me for it, we can arrest yeah. me and then we can go to court after that. Uh, you just have an idea on you? What am I doing wrong, man? Graffiti. I'm creating and it's about to rain and wash it all away. Yeah, that's, that's my concern. That is not. Uh, could you stop it, please? Could you stop it? Just stop, okay? This is impermanent, man. Okay. Come yeah. right here, please. Sit on this way. Hey, come yeah, here. The police are out okay, here messing with me. I'm okay. just trying to do my sidewalk truck. Hold on, hold on. It's okay. We try to talk to you. You don't listen. We try to be civilized. We want to give you a break. Now you're pushing us to do this. I'm not pushing you to do this. You're yes, choosing no, to you do are. this because you're a bully. Oh, we're bullying. Yeah. So, breaking the law. Sidewalk. No bullying. Okay. It's also simple, man. All you have to do is just give me your name and that's it. Yeah, I told you. I told you. I told you I wasn't trying to go this far, all right? Well, you're going this far. You chose to. Yeah. I need my stuff. Go ahead and get it. Huh? We'll go ahead and get it right now for you. What's your name, man? You don't have an ID on you? You want some in my pocket? Can I go ahead and grab it? I mean, I don't well, have I any other choice, do I? Y'all have already cuffed me for a sidewalk truck. Yeah, this wallet right here? So you're just trying to get some tip money off of that or what? Yeah. Gotcha. Trying to create beauty in a public place. As long as you don't have a permit for that. You don't need a permit. No? Okay. You can explain that to the judge, okay? Do you have any weapons on you, man? No. Can you deny that anything that's going to poke or shake me? Backpack, my artwork over there. All right, man. Just give me a favor. Just go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take you in the back of my patrol car, right? and then we're gonna figure out what we're gonna go ahead and do, all right? This time you're just detained. You're not free to leave. Before charging the man, the police tried to find an arrest warrant. It's one of the most common tactics to nullify the First Amendment. When he came back clear, they arrested him on a bogus on-view charge to take him off the street. Okay. 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 Uh, take his phone. These are the elements of the crime. This two. This one, I, I don't know. It's not mine, so it's going to be right here. <coughs> so this is our evidence. Let's take that. Okay. Let's so, go to the so Okay. We're going to book them? Yeah. We're going to go All right. Yeah, definitely, okay. The police talked to the sidewalk artist for a short time, but when he started video recording the cops, they immediately seized his phone and arrested him. Hey, hey, hey the police, police are out here messing with me. me. I'm, I'm just, just trying, trying to do my, my sidewalk, sidewalk truck. Hold on, hold on. It's okay, we tried to talk to you. Perhaps the officers were triggered that it might be a First Amendment audit. Officer Brayton, who was training the younger officer, was a faithful frontline soldier of Chief Joe Savaggio when Leon Valley declared war on those who filmed the police. 
That included raiding the family of a YouTuber and a mass arrest at a fake press conference. Yeah. All right, guys, first and foremost, Mal, come over here, you're under arrest. Get over here. Your cameras, your, your devices, every one of them are gonna be taken. Every one of y'all. I need your device. Okay, I'm not, I don't wanna give it to you, Vaughn. Which one's bringing back? I'll take your camera. All right, sir, come here. I need your camera, sir. Take his camera and quit talking to him. You want a confrontation, bro? I'm not gonna give it I, to I you. I don't want a confrontation. Have a good day. Maybe they're coming to get me. Maybe Leon Valley issued a warrant. Police, start the car! Get out! 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 Get No, no, I, I'm doing hard. This is my right. I can't do this. The contempt of cop aspect of this arrest is further demonstrated by Officer Breton's statements to Sergeant Mandry. Graffiti. How what? The whole uh, crossing in the corner, the by the bus stop on the the how do you call it? Marker or what? No, nah, it's chalk. Okay, is that a arrestable offense? But yes, because he's okay, chalk right. marker from a marker all that stuff. I'm, I'm gonna read the statue again. But, but I wanna give him a, uh, a break. Uh, but order for class B has to be uh, indelible, uh, meaning uh, not erasable. <laughs> So uh, chalk is washing. I don't know with the water is not washing okay, off, okay, so okay. it's gonna okay. take a little okay. bit of time. But chalk, uh, just be careful because chalk is not considered a permanent yeah. marking. Okay. So the I told him, hey, what is this? Doing? I'm oh, gonna give him a break. Hey, just stop. No, no, I, I'm doing art. This is my right. I can do this. You did it on the sidewalk? Or on the sidewalk. Okay. That's why not gonna be a rest of offense. Yeah, we're gonna check it right now. If that is the case, just let him go. That's yeah, double check, but tell him be careful because if we bring something <coughs> back here like that, then. If we unlawfully detain them, then that opens yeah. up for lawsuit. Okay. The supervisor realized that it was an unlawful arrest, but he did not order the officers to immediately release the arrested artist. Breton claimed that he was going to give the man a break and made it seem like the artist was non-compliant. However, when Breton illegally ordered him to stop the constitutionally protected activity, the artist did indeed stop. The, I told him, hey, what is this? Doing? I'm gonna give him a break, hey, just stop. No, no, I, I'm doing art. This is my right, I can't do this. Could you stop it, please? Could you stop it, just stop, okay? This is impermanent, man. Man, you just have an idea on you? You have your idea on you, man? What's your name, man? You don't have an idea on you? The artist explained that he was engaged in free expression and that the chalk was not illegal. The police, apparently not satisfied with the lack of unquestioned obedience to officers, demanded his identification. However, in Texas, you are not required to provide your details unless you are driving or are lawfully arrested. Texas officers ignore the law and instead use the threat of arrest to coerce identification. You have an ID on you? I don't have an ID if on me, no. If you ID, we will take you to jail, okay? He's threatening to arrest me for riding with sidewalk chalk. Whether or not no, you agree no, with the no, message, no, that's no, not the point. Man threatened to arrest you. Yes, you did. I have it recorded. You're yeah, such a liar. I, I can arrest you. Absolutely, I can. But my plan is not to arrest you. You said you would arrest me if, if I didn't give you my name and whatever well, well, else you it you was that you name, asked for. You? you gave me your name, didn't you? If you I mean, no. ID, we will take you to jail, okay? It's also simple, man. All you have to do is just give me your name and that's it. The alleged made-up crime was insignificant and not urgent. There was no breach of the peace or safety concern. Instead of acting with prudence, the police went hands-on in a minute after arriving. The police could have first called a supervisor, a prosecutor, or the city attorney. Another option, they could have issued the artist a citation with a promise to appear in court. Although that would be chilling and inconvenient, it would have been much less intrusive than being locked in a cage while handcuffed. All right, man. So this is our police department. We're just gonna hold you and process all your stuff. It's gonna go ahead and get everything out on your pocket top. All right. I'm going to so here. The artist was released without charges later that evening. Had the police not immediately resorted to force, this would not have cost the taxpayers. The hasty actions of the police officers left the city administration with no opportunity to prevent the violation. However, after investigating the incident, 
the city administrators did what every government could do, say I'm sorry. On May 15th, 2023, an individual was arrested for displaying public chalk art. On behalf of the city of Leon Valley, we'd like to extend our apologies to Lakey 360. In an effort to show the community that we welcome public chalk art, we'll be hosting a Walk the Chalk event here at the Leon Valley Public Library. The police chief and city manager each sent a formal apology letter to the artist. Officer Brayton was placed on probation and demoted from field training officer. And hang with me here, I promise you want to see this out to the end. If it wasn't about Leon Valley, you wouldn't believe the dramatic twists that are coming. All right, so a few weeks later after his arrest, the artist addressed city council and urged them to fire Officer Breton. As we used our art to pay tribute to the lives lost in the tragic events of Uvalde a year ago. It's disheartening to reflect on the fact that while 400 officers failed to stop a single armed assailant, Officer Breton deemed sidewalk chalk as something to be met with immediate arrest, having me in cuffs in less than one minute after first contact. But what if you or someone close to you had their constitutional rights violated and faced public arrest? What if they panicked during this wrongful arrest? How much could go wrong? Moreover, let's consider how Officer Breton would respond if I had spoken to him in the aggressive and provoking manner of the free speech auditors. Instead of dwelling on these hypothetical situations, should we not take more proactive steps to terminate Officer Breton before he inflicts serious harm and y'all are faced with consequences of his actions. Losing his training pr privileges isn't good enough. The thought that he was a trainer at all suggests a problem much deeper than just Breton. This isn't the first time Officer Breton has been a topic at City Council. According to voting records, Breton lawfully voted in the Leon Valley election, even though he doesn't live there. It's part of a Republican election manipulation program that encourages out-of-town police officers to vote for the incumbent officials who employ them. A local activist, Eric Mata, called out the police for their political involvement. Three registered voters using the address of 6400 El Verde Road, that they are either currently serving on LVPD, our police department, or our former LVPD serving in other cities, Justice. But the idea, again, that we see officers getting involved in politics here is outrageous. Thank you. We will see this to, to an end and root out this corruption. Be ashamed of yourself. There's no comments as you go back to your seat. Keep them to yourself. Just, just at the podium, please. Sorry. The police chief was laughing in my face, so. Excuse me, let's, let's hear from the next resident citizen. It's real fun, huh? Okay, Mr. Mata, please. Okay, just step outside then up to the foyer. Okay, uh, jo Josh Stevens sure. from, uh, sure. from Florida Stokes. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so I guess we'll see what the Secretary of State says about that. Because I got the thing active voter list um, oh, two days ago. Joe Savaggio, the since-fired police chief, would commonly manufacture scenarios to entrap his political opponents. The mayor alone has authority over the order of the meeting. But when the chief took the law into his own hands, Officer Brayton eagerly and immediately ejected the Leon Valley resident who had just delivered public comments that were critical of the police. Hey, she said she can stay in the foyer. Hey, she said in the foyer. She said in the foyer. She said in the foyer, sir. She said in the foyer, right here. I've been always kind to you. You're scared because you did a corrupt thing. Don't ever rest in my relations. So I, I hope that you take that into consideration when you address Jed Hefner's comments from earlier as well. But, um, uh, so this guy did it. You see, you see the chief told him to do it. I didn't That's think right. you did it on your own. Now, you see, I couldn't hear what they said because it was right here on the entrance. So okay, but I'm going to talk to the mayor about it. If, if your chief, your boss told you to do that, I will bet against what the mayor yes, said. Orders, you know. Okay. 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 Right. I should. I have no yeah, because Sabagio is just itching to to oh, kick the people out he doesn't like. You violated my rights. You're gonna lawsuit. 
Did y'all catch that? Breton was warned that he would get sued. Maybe he should have listened. Breton has received multiple formal complaints. In one instance, a concerned citizen was trying to document Breton's license plate after he observed a police car speeding in a school zone. Breton pulled the man over, threatened to impound his vehicle, and issued a citation. Leon Valley excused Breton's speeding and endorsed the traffic stop, claiming the driver was pulled over for officer safety. It was a double case of double standards. The police claimed the driver was unsafe while making the same exact lane changes as Breton. In another instance, the police administration endorsed Breton's conduct after a 75-year-old woman complained about his attitude, advising that he was a poor reflection on the police department. So why not fire Breton now? Likely, the city thinks he has enough leverage for a discrimination lawsuit. In Texas, the only thing more dangerous than cop watching is attending a city council meeting. During the push to fire Chief Savaggio, Councilman Stevens was being prosecuted for allegedly assaulting Slavagio at a city council meeting. The reporting officer? You guessed it, Raton, along with Mandry. The case was left pending for a year. Finally, prior to a controversial council meeting about Savaggio's employment, the police attempted to arrest Stevens to do a humiliating perp walk that would have caused him to miss the meeting. However, Stevens, a previous guest and viewer of the Corruption Report, used our tactics to outsmart the police. Instead, he arranged a walkthrough surrender with his attorney. Right on cue, Savaggio's buddy reporter, Patty Santos with KSAT, requested the police report directly from Savaggio instead of going through the proper channels. If you recall, Savaggio tried to arrest the mayor for releasing information outside of the traditional channels. They later tried to remove her from office. Anyways, Savaggio instructed a police officer to work directly with the reporter instead of looping in the city secretary per the standard procedures. The full four-page police report was sent to Santos within the hour. Meanwhile, non-preferred requesters had to wait days. When my side requested it a year earlier, a modified version was released. The city secretary was freaking out. She instructed the police, do not send out the Stevens police report. Now there are two reports out there. They are showing this online and it makes it look like we are hiding something. It looked like they were hiding because they were hiding. Police reports and videos are not concealed for legitimate criminal justice purposes. The police play political games with information to manipulate public perception. Chief Savaggio was foolish to think that he could beat change Leon Valley with a worn-out police game. A month later, Sabaggio was fired. I'd like to recognize our acting uh, city manager, Crystal Caldera. Hi, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I just wanted to inform the Council, Chief Sabaggio is no longer with the city of Leon Valley. I have appointed um, David Gonzalez's uh, police chief. Um, I know he's received some criticism on social media, so I'm politely asking this Council and the community to give David a fresh start. Um, and judge him based on um, his ability to lead the department. Breton wrote in the police report that he was outside to prevent a disturbance due to change Leon Valley members gathering and talking negative comments against Slavaggio. Breton then took Chief Slavaggio's statement, noting that the chief's chest is hurting because Stevens pushed himself back towards Slavaggio and struck Slavaggio with his left elbow. Breton admitted that it was Slavaggio who first approached Stevens. After the chief was fired, Baton filed a complaint against Stevens in response to a Change Leon Valley Facebook post that called out him and Mandry for assisting Savaggio in targeting citizens for political purposes. The post stated, Baton is a native of Mexico, yet hasn't been educated since immigrating about the U.S. Constitution. Oh boy. Change Leon Valley encouraged the police chief to fire Baton. Instead of exercising his Fifth Amendment right, Stevens sent Breton one of his long-ass emails. Stevens accused him of writing a frivolous police report and said his reputation would be dragged through the mud. Breton then used the email for the basis of his complaint, claiming that Stevens made threatening statements against his person, which created a hostile work environment and possible retaliation. Since elected officials are not subject to personnel policies, the complaint was promptly dismissed after consultation with the city attorney. 
but it didn't end there. The police department then cried to the district attorney and tried to get felony retaliation charges filed against the councilman. Leon Valley police claimed that Stevens was trying to intimidate Breton and did not testify by threatening civil litigation. However, the political drive-by hit backfired on the police. The charges against Stevens were dropped a few days later. Now for the number you've been waiting for. The sidewalk chalk artist teamed up with civil rights attorney Brandon Grable to send a demand letter to Leon Valley. A few days later, the city agreed to settle the matter for $16,500. If the representation agreement was a 60-40 split, which is common for civil rights cases taken on contingency, that's $10,000 for the artist. Alright, the final plot twist. This is Breton's resignation letter. That's right, he quit a year and a half prior to the sidewalk chalk arrest. He blamed his departure on low morale and the hostile work environment created by elected officials, constant negative criticism, cyberbullying, and lack of support from the council, including council's desire to disappear the police department. He said his new job at the hospital police department was well suited to his long-term career goals. But less than a year later, he was already asking for his old job back, even though it was essentially the same city council. Leon Valley conducted a purported background investigation and recommended Bertun for hire, even though no personnel records were provided by the other police agencies he worked at. Investigator B.D. Whitson found no derogatory or disqualifying information. I'm not sure who thought it would be a good fit, but they rehired him for the city manager's fresh start policy. I can see both sides of the coin. On one hand, you're bringing back an officer who played the very same games that started the Leon Valley conflict in the first place. On the other hand, if you can successfully reform the culture and performance of employees, that's making the world a better place. It's a better alternative to having gypsy cops who change location, but not their behavior. Earlier today, city manager Caldera told me, Efforts by the chief and I have been invested in reshaping the organizational culture. The chalk incident served as a significant moment for the staff with a clear message that such interactions will no longer be tolerated. A lot of work was done in Leon Valley to get to this level of transparency and justice. But the Leon Valley story isn't over yet. Next month, I'll tell you about the latest lawsuit payout. Speaking of payouts, I never got one, so if you'd like to see me continue doing this work, please consider sending a tip of $5 or more. Information about how to contribute is in the video description. To get up to speed or relive the epic moments, check out my Leon Valley playlist. Thank you for watching.